The Spiderwick Chronicles is a series of children's books that follows three siblings, Jared, Simon, and Mallory, and their amazing adventures in a fantastical world of fairies. Now, when the first book was published last summer, it immediately became a bestseller, as did the subsequent releases. And the journey concludes in the fifth and final book, The Wrath of Mulgarath, which hits stores on Tuesday. Joining us this morning, the co-creators Holly Black and Tony DiTerlizzi. They're here with a preview. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very us. exciting, the fifth and final version, <laughs> right? We get a preview. Yes, yes. A lot of people call this the, sort of a Harry Potter type of book for younger children. Is that a good description? Yeah, definitely. I would, I would say, I mean, the books, if you put them all together, they're probably five or 600 pages. But what we tried to do was, was trim them down into like 100 page books that are a little less daunting for younger or for maybe younger even reluctant books. readers. Yeah. It also keeps the suspense going yes. from one book to <laughs> another. Yeah. Unless there'd be a lot more illustrations. Yes. Lots yeah. Yes, which, which the, the fine illustrator is here, the author is here, but you guys say that you actually co-create, right? Do you collaborate on storylines and things like that? Yeah, we sit down and we talk about um, what we're going to do in each book, and then I go off and write, and Tony goes off and draws, and we kind of send stuff back and forth to really try and, you know, look at each other's work and make sure we're doing the best work we can do. Now, for a lot of people who may not be familiar with this series, can you give us the premise? It's about three children who move into this old home from it's the big old city, house. Yes. and they discover a whole new world they yes. never knew existed. Well, the right? invisible world, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they discover their great-great-uncle, Arthur Spiderwick's field guide, which kind of details the habits and habitats of fairies, and there's some things going on around the house, so they think maybe this has something to do with the book, and then great deal of trouble ensues. Yes. <laughs> yes. They jump into this whole yes. other world. Calamity and disaster. How, how did you guys come up with this concept? We were actually told this story by uh, three children and they claimed it was true and we thought it was such a cool story that we had to tell it and so we Holly changed their names and we just kind of mm -hmm. fudged it and squished it to fit in five little books. And you guys were at a book signing, right? You got that's delivered right. a mysterious letter. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that's right. Reportedly, <laughs> and from these children who said that they were indeed three children who had moved into an mm -hmm. old house. And that's right. Here's what happened to them, right? right. Yes. And we had to change it to make it fit into the books and to make it a little bit more exciting here in places. But basically, it's their story. So you're you're a believer in fairies and all these what a hobgoblins and all these other things. <laughs> I would say yes. We're, we're where, um, I'm definitely, I want to believe, yeah. neither of us have seen, like, real evidence, but I think <laughs> we're kind of like... We'd like uh, to believe. Yes. And we're not, we'd still, we, we're still getting a lot of evidence from people, kids write to us and tell us about their fairy experiences. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And so Very it's hard cool. not to, to yeah. in those, light of all of that. Those letters are pretty convincing, you know, when they, they write down now everything they've seen mm -hmm. and heard. I understand you have some evidence here as well, right? Yes. You have some this some props. What are what, what Arthur Spider Wicks Library? Yes. Arthur Spider Wicks the guy who created the actual field guide. What are these fairy boots? What are these? These are leprechauns shoes. Oh leprechaun. I should have known. Farmer. I yes. thought they would be more pointy. <laughs> or maybe green. Or shinier. Like, or yeah. you know, have a have Newer. a cool symbol on the side or something. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's an ogre's tooth. Yep. Ooh, gross. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is some troll hair troll over hair. here. Okay, and a troll, troll hair. Claw. Yes, and a right, troll. Right, troll hair. Looks like hair. it's out of the shower drain, I know. Good, okay. gross. <laughs> how about how about a reading from the book to, to give our uh, viewers at home a little sneak peek? Okay, Ooh, you want to do the good. reading now? Yeah, this is sure. from the fifth and final installment, not on the bookshelves yet, but you you're hearing it right here on the early show. All right, so we're gonna set it up really quick. Um, basically, Jared, Simon, and Mallory's mom has gone missing, so they've run home to finally tell her everything. They found the book, there's goblins after them, and they realize their mom's been kidnapped. And there's one goblin left on the roof of the house, and they're going to interrogate him. When I say pull... Jared, Simon said... Pull! Together they tried to pry the griffin's jaws apart. Mallory's fingers slid into Byron's mouth as she strained, nearly hanging from the griffin, trying to use her weight against him. Byron struggled and suddenly gave in, opening his mouth and dropping Hogsquill's full weight into Jared's arms. Losing his balance, Jared slid backwards on the shingles, letting go of Hogsquill and scrambling for a handhold. The hobgoblin slid as well, knocking loose the shingle Jared was gripping onto. Jared slipped and grabbed hold of the gutter moments before he would have fallen off the house. Simon and Mallory looked at Jared with wide eyes. He swallowed hard. As they moved to haul him back onto the roof, 
Jared saw a hog squeal make for the open window. He's getting away, Jared said, trying to pull himself higher. His elbow dug into the dried leaves and mud that clotted the gutter. Forget about that stupid goblin, Mallory said. Grab a hold of me. <laughs> Very good. What so a lot of kids will be grabbing hold of the bug. Congratulations uh, thanks, on all, the, all so your success. That's Holly Black and Tony DiTerlizzi, and they do believe in fairies.